Desert Landforms In the United States, there are two distinctly different areas that contain deserts. One of them is Basin and Range, which is this area outlined here. Basin and Range is created because the crust is pulling apart. As it pulls apart, many faults form, and those faults will downdrop basins with mountain rains in between. The next area that has a desert in the United States is the Colorado Plateau. A plateau, by definition, is a high, flat area. The Colorado Plateau was formed when miles of, hor of horizontal sedimentary rock were uplifted. In this picture of the Colorado Plateau with the Grand Canyon through it, you can see that indeed the rocks are very horizontal and they also tend to be very red because they have hematite. As a plateau is cut by its canyons, chunks of the plateau are separated from the plateau and they are called mesas. A smaller chunk of the plateau left behind is a butte, a small remnant of a mesa. In this diagram, you can see a plateau in the foreground and a mesa behind it. And this could be called a tabletop mountain or a mesa. The buttes of Monument Valley are some of the most photographed and beautiful buttes of the world. These are called the mittens because it looks like they've got thumbs. Very often a butte will be left behind as a hard resistant layer of rock is protecting the softer rock below it. Finally, you can have such a thin piece of a butte left behind that you have a pinnacle. Basin and range, however, does not need to be made of horizontal rock and usually is not. As the crust is under tension, it's pulling apart and these faults form. These faults are called normal faults. Entire sections fall downwards. They will become the basin. Another word for a downdropped block is called a graben. The sections that are left behind and up in the air are the ranges, the mountain ranges, otherwise known as horsts. Graben and horst or basin and range. Here we have a photograph of mountain ranges with the basins in between. You can see that because tension is pulling the crust apart that all of the basins and ranges are parallel to each other. Diagram of basin and range, the top diagram shows you crust that has been newly faulted. The crust used to have a horizontal layer on it, but in the faulting process the horizontal layers became tilted as well as broken. Now those horizontal layers, as well as the metamorphic rock beneath them, are part of the mountain ranges. They are bedrock. Meanwhile, the mountain ranges are busy eroding away, and that sediment that erodes from them fills in the basins. In the second diagram, the basins are simply filling up deeper and deeper with the sediment of the eroding bedrock. Finally, in the last diagram, there's nothing left of the mountain ranges. The only thing left might be a small remnant of bedrock surrounded by sediment. That's referred to as an inselberg. In this picture, you can see the bedrock surrounded by sediment and inselberg. Inform shapes in a desert tend to be distinctive. Would these rounded hills form in a desert or in a humid area? Well, the fact that they're rounded tells you there's probably a humid area because desert topography is very angular. The reason for that is that deserts have very little chemical weathering because they have very little water. Water does erode in the desert, however. In addition to water, there's another factor that erodes, and that is wind. Which is more important? Water. Although water is rare, it does more erosion because there's very little vegetation in the desert to hold down the soil. So when it does rain, the, 
the rain erodes much more than in a humid environment. It does occur in the desert. It's common to have flash floods. Stream channels are dry most of the year in the desert. However, in a flash flood, they can be filled very quickly with a wall of water. The dry washes are also called arroyos or wadis. The water comes down sometimes very quickly and dangerously. It could be carrying mud or it could be carrying rocks and even boulders. If it is carrying rocks and boulders, it's referred to as a debris flow. This is a wash in Tucson, Arizona, as it would appear most of the year. However, every once in a while, it looks like that. People in Arizona have to be careful about driving their car through washes because they could be suddenly hit by a flash flood. A student of mine was working in Utah when they heard noise from up canyon. It was water coming downhill. It wasn't even raining near them. The water was a result of a thunderstorm further uphill. So he took these pictures. Soon the canyon became full of a river and he switched into color film. River was carrying a lot of mud. Also they had to deal with the consequences of assuming that the dry wash would remain dry. Once the flash flood produces a mud flow or debris flow, the flow will get down to the bottom of the canyon and head into the basin. The basin is flat and therefore the water will slow down, dropping its alluvium, resulting in an alluvial fan. This alluvial fan is in Death Valley, right next to Badwater Basin. In the top diagram, A, you can see a newly faulted basin and range. As canyons start to cut their way into the range, an alluvial fan is formed at the base. That process continues until two alluvial fans join each other to form a bajada. Notice also that the cliff of the range is retreating, leaving behind gradual bedrock covered with sediment. That gradual bedrock is called pediment. Here we have a bajada in West Death Valley. You can see one alluvial fan coming out and joining another alluvial fan, coalescing to become a bajada. In this Google Earth satellite image, you can see the Colorado River creating the Grand Canyon as it carves into the Colorado Plateau. The Colorado Plateau is over 7,000 feet in elevation, so that gives the Colorado River a lot of ability to do erosion. As a result, the canyons that erode tend to be very, very steep. Sandstone is one of the layers in this canyon, Buckskin Gulch. Because sandstone has no weak layers to it, it tends to remain upright as the river carves down there's very little mass wasting. The result is something called a slot canyon. In fact, Buckskin Gulch is the longest slot canyon in the world. They're very beautiful, but beware of being in a slot canyon. In fact, you're not allowed into Buckskin Gulch if the weather report is bad, because if there's a flash flood, there's nowhere for the water to go but up, and there's nowhere for you to go at all. There's evidence that there has been flash floods here because above my head you can see a lodged log. I'm glad I wasn't there when that happened. Quicksand is not uncommon in canyon bottoms. Quicksand is not dry sand. I don't know if you ever saw Lawrence of Arabia, but don't believe it. Quicksand is wet sand and mud that happens to be held up by the movement of water within it. It's very difficult to see the difference between sand that will hold your weight. In this picture you can see my footprint. Right next to it is sand that was being held up by water and was thigh deep, as you can see with my hiking pole. Very rarely would it be more than thigh deep. If you do end up in quicksand more than thigh deep, you can still get out of it. Simply lean forward and treat it as if it's very thick water and swim your way out of it. A playa is a dry lake bed in the center of a desert basin. This is racetrack playa found in northern Death Valley. 
the playa will contain the silt and clay carried far beyond the alluvial fans into the center of the basin, where the water evaporates away. Also, you might find evaporites, salt, and other evaporite minerals in the playa. Racetrack playa is known for a unique phenomenon. There are a number of small stones that seem to move on their own, leaving tracks behind them in the mud. How did they form? Well, one hint is that it probably wasn't aliens. What was it? I think I'm going to let that remain a mystery. Every once in a while, a dry lake bed will become a lake bed. This is the center of Death Valley, which is usually a playa and is now a playa lake. Playas are one of the flattest surfaces on Earth, so when a playa lake fills up, it doesn't take much. This lake is 10 miles across, yet you could cross it and never be over your head. You might not even be more than thigh deep, it is so flat. Most of the time, however, it looks like this. This is Devil's Co Golf Course of Death Valley. Those white mounds are dirty salt that have accumulated over thousands of years. Another desert phenomenon is desert varnish. Desert varnish appears on rocks that have been exposed for a while, and they seem to include the activity of both bacteria and water, producing a stain on the surface. The rock ends up having a much darker surface where it's exposed to the air and a much lighter surface may be underneath. The varnish can actually make the rock look shiny. The Native Americans took advantage of this fact and would carve off the overlayer leaving behind a petroglyph of the lighter color underneath. This is a petroglyph of a bighorn sheep found in Little Petroglyph Canyon in China Lake, California. I have no idea what that is. This was probably a few hundred years old. However, the next petroglyph, I suspect, is much younger. 